special day in each coming. Every time we celebrate the baptism of one who also uh, would desire to follow the Lord baptism. We are so pleased to see each and every one of us out here today. May God be a great, a great, great blessing to each and every one of us. I want to read to you some scripture concerning baptism. In Romans 6, verse 3, it says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we all shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Today we have one that has already been saved a number of years ago and did follow through with baptism. But since then she has grown in the Lord and desires to be baptized once again, and now that she knows so much more about what walking in Christ means. This occasion is going to join us, and you just be praying for her. And I'm going to ask Brother Danny if you would lead us in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come, we're proud parents of Kaylee. And I know God's got to be proud of what she's building. And we just want her to walk God's way, not the world's. And Lord, we just ask you to be with us as we go through this day and this hour. And just touch Kaylee. That when she submerges, she gets rid of the old. And when she rises, she comes up with the new. We just ask you to bless her, everybody here in this church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, is it your profession of faith that you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Is it upon your profession of faith I now baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit?
So I just want to give the Lord praise for that, that we're able to be here today. And we, um, thank you for coming to support our family. Sunday school teachers and secretaries need to meet with you Wednesday night at 6.30, getting ready for all of our classes to be going full blast again, and uh, as well as ushers. Uh, make sure ushers are available. Let's meet with the ushers as well at 6.45. So Sunday school teachers and secretaries, 6.30, ushers at 6.45 on Wednesday. Thank you. Does anybody have any prayer requests? She was a member of a sweet Christian friend of mine, uh, Robin Bedrock. She was gassing up last night on her way home, and they shot in her car. And it came to the passenger windshield, and the only thing that spared her was the rear view mirror. It hit the rear view mirror of the Union River State back when she was out. She's very shaky. Said that 
or in need for you to heal them, if it be thy will. Lord, we thank you for your blessings each and every day. And may our faith show it when we see somebody that we don't know. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 moment as we present this Bible to one of our own youth and I'm gonna let Crystal describe uh, this youth for you in just a moment but we're so proud of her as a church body and so glad that she is with us this morning. Crystal. Thank you. So it's my honor to recognize one of our graduates. So Sydney Blair if you will come up. So Sydney is our only graduate this year um, her parents are Dave Blair and Desiree Nunnery. Dave has gone on to be with the Lord, and Sydney, I'm sorry, and Desiree is not able to be with us today due to a family emergency. But I know that she will, um, she's listening or will listen in at a later time, and I know she would be here. Um, wouldn't want to miss it for nothing in the world. So, Sydney has graduated from Early College High School. She has earned her high school diploma along with her associate's degree from Brunswick Community College. She will also be attending NC State University in August. So go look back. All right, so many of you may know that I am the youth director, but also I'm a school counselor. So this weekend, I've been thinking about Sydney a lot, and I thought, you know, I just have to say a few words. So Sydney, I have a few words to, tell, to say to you <laughs> um, before we present the Bible to you. So the first thing is, I want you to continue to love the Lord with all your heart. That's number one. Number two is I want you to be true to yourself. I want you to have fun. I want you to enjoy each and every day. But I also want you to remember where your heart's at, and I want you to be true to your values, okay? Number three. Number three, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being a leader, being one of our oldest leaders. Um, we have a lot of young children. I feel that Sydney has been a leader. She has stood in there being the oldest, willing to be around the younger children to set that example, and I appreciate your dedication. And number four, I wish your mom was here, but I know she's going to listen. Be sure to call your mom. Um, we need to make sure that she feeds Jordan <laughs> and, and, takes care of, and takes care of Jordan. I'm just giving her a hard time. So at this time, we present you a beautiful Bible, and it says to Sidney Blair from Old Shalom Baptist Church, may God bless you daily. We love you. Do you have anything you would like to say? Words. <laughs> <laughs> when am I ever out of words? Uh, I would, as you guys are celebrating me, I would also like to say thank you to all of you who have been a big part of this journey in my life. It's so good to have a church family um, and so many people I can call um, <clears throat> a family um, on the daily. I do promise to come home and to visit and to hang out. Definitely in September when I get to roast the pastor again, that's a must. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate all of you. Um, I appreciate you, I appreciate you, I appreciate you. That's all I can really say because I just mean it so much. Thank you.
Good morning. Morning. Yeah. Okay. Um, this morning, I'd like to welcome welcome you to the game show Consequences, the show that allows you to choose the outcome of different circumstances in your life by choosing your own actions. I will be giving each of the contestants um, their circumstances and then giving them actions from which they can choose. Understand, contestants. At any time, you may pause the game and consult the lifeline. This Bible is the lifeline. It can help you determine uh, what decisions you need to make. And at any moment, you can ask for forgiveness for your sins. You can confess your sins, which will then uh, guide you to change your actions in the future which will also help you alter some or all aspects of your circumstances. Do you all understand the rules of the game? How do we win? Great question. You win if you can be completely perfect throughout life. If you can make zero mistakes, you win the game. (laughs) Are you kidding? That's impossible. I always make mistakes. Yeah, that's just life. You come across issues and you have to figure them out to the best of your ability. Exactly. Life is just a bunch of choices to get what you want. But I want to make the best choices possible. So if there's something I can win at the end, then I want to win. Well, shouldn't it be both? If the only way to win is to never make a mistake, then that's how you play the game. So I want to know right now. Oh, that's out loud. Mm-hmm. Yes. At, like I said, at any time, you may pause the game. Uh, then I choose to pause right now. <laughs> I want to consult the lifeline thing over here. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Okay, good, 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 good. Let me see this thing. Hold it up there for me so I can see it good. All right. First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So. Repent, and each of you will be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for your forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit, Acts 2, 38 says. That's so cool. Victory and an amazing gift. I want that right now. Lord, forgive me of all of my sins and be my Lord and Savior. Congratulations, you win the game, but you still have to live your life. Well, I understand. Contestant number one, please step forward. Uh, I'm ready. I don't need any help. Okay. I still want feels good. Okay, contestant number one, you have a big math test coming up. Uh, your first choice is, do you study or do you go out and have fun? Mm, I think I want to have fun. Well, you come up to your test day and you don't know some of the answers. Do you do the best you can? Or do you cheat off the, per- the students next to you? Well, I want to do good on the test, and it doesn't feel good to fail, because then I'll look like a loser. Um, so I think I'll cheat. Well, you end up passing the test. You get in the habit of cheating, and you make it all through school. But now, you want to take the SATs, which are your entrance exams. And you've never really been good at math, because you've been cheating your whole time. So you have a really hard time. So you have a few options here. I'm going to read them to you. Um, Number one, you can get a part-time job so you can take evening courses to improve your test scores so you can try to maybe get into college or you can work as a cashier at the supermarket for the rest of your life and try to be content with that or you can live a miserable life on the streets. (laughs) Uh, Well, I kind of wanted to be an architect and design buildings. For that, you have to be really good at math. Well. (laughs) Contestant number two, please step forward. (laughs) Okay, we'll see. Uh, Contestant number two, there's a new girl in school, uh, but your best friend makes fun of her. 
Um, do you tell your best friend not to make fun of her, or do you continue to go along with your best friend? Um, well, now, most of your classmates don't trust you anymore, and they're calling you a bully. Do you apologize and try to be nice to everyone, or do you continue to go along with your best friend? Best friend So you become critical of everyone around you, and eventually you have a big fight with your best friend. Do you try to start to be nice to everyone again, uh, or do you keep going on how you are? I haven't done anything wrong. Contestant number three. Nothing to worry about. I've confessed my sins, and I've been forgiven. So I don't have to worry. Even if I mess up, I don't have to worry. Okay, but you still have to live your life. Um, it doesn't matter. By grace, I am free. I don't have to worry about trying to be good. Your parents tell you to babysit your little brother just one hour every day after school. That's it. Do you do that, or do you go out to the mall? I go shopping. My little brother can take care of himself. And anyway, what? He t says, anyways, he, gets it. he says he won't tell. So, and it's just an hour. When you get home, your parents ask you how it went with your little brother. Do you confess or do you tell them? Tell my parents we had a good time. <laughs> so you lie and you get into the habit of lying um, and not obeying authority. Uh, right. They're just little lies anyway. It's okay. Contestant number four, please step forward. There we go. All right, contestant number four. You end up having a very difficult life. Your father leaves you when you're young, and your mother is angry at life most of the time. She doesn't hit you, but she calls you names a lot. Cool. Um, I need to go tell the book. Go into the library. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hmm. Matthew five forty four. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So I would tell my mom that the things she says to me hurts my feelings very much, but I forgive her and I still love her. I'd also tell her that Jesus loves her too and that I would be praying for her every day. This action touches your mom a little bit, but she still continues to call you names. <laughs> Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 to 30. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in your heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And Galatians 6, 2 says, Bear one another's burdens and therefore fulfill the law of Christ. I would definitely keep trusting Christ, and leaning on Jesus as well, I would say stay involved in church while I'd also have a spiritual family to help me. Very nice. Now, your mom's going to tell you that there's no food at the house and she wants you to go to the grocery store and steal. Do you obey her? Um, what do you do? Ephesians 6, 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. <laughs> Exodus twenty fifteen, You shall not steal. <laughs> I'm just going to sit right here, okay? That's fine. <laughs> All right. I would tell her that I will obey her unless it goes against what God says, and God says that stealing is wrong. I then go to church for help, and they put together a food hamper <laughs> for us. That is a lovely answer. But one day you start to get angry and you blow up at your mom and you call her name. Hmm. James 5, 16. Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. So I would apologize to my mom and I would continue to pray for her and show her love. Your continuous love and actions towards your mother are a great witness. She ends up going to church with you, and then she becomes a believer. Woo! 
Oh, yes, I'm so heavy. <laughs> my, my mom became a believer. That's all the joy in the world I need. I need Contestant three, your turn. Um, I can do this. One day while you're out at the mall having fun, your little brother gets a little hungry and he tries to make himself something to eat and he ends up burning himself. Your parents come home and they see him laying there, home alone. No, what have I done? I should have been there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should pause. Romans 6, 1 through 2. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? May it never be. How shall we who died in sin still live in it? Oh, and this verse here. How come I've never looked at this verse? Romans 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice <coughs> acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may prove what the will of God is. Mm -hmm. That which is good and acceptable and perfect. Oops, I've got to look, I've got a lot of work to do. Wait, I mean pause. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I see I need to learn, lean on God for everything. I have a lot to learn, so I decide to walk closely with God. Doing the things that please God gives me and the people around me a much better life. And now I need to go apologize to my brother and parents. Pause and take a look. Proverbs 20:19. He who goes about as a slanderer will be able to see. Therefore, do not associate with the gossip. First Corinthians 13:4. Love is patient, kind, not jealous, doesn't brag, and is not arrogant. Philippians 2:3. Do not do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourselves. Matthew 7, 12. And everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want to treat them. They won't, you want them to treat you. Mm -hmm. Let me say that lifeline thing. <laughs> okay. Colossians three twenty five. For he who does wrong will receive the consequences of the wrong which he has done. Romans six twenty three. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why wouldn't we want that? I mean, I want to be an architect, but even more than that, I want this free gift of eternal life. Me too. So there we have it. A successful first game of consequences, if I say so myself. Just a message to the audience. There are eternal and daily consequences to our actions and choices. Which actions will you choose? And are you consulting your lifeline? Thank you. Well, I guess it's my turn up here. <laughs> um, today's lesson is going to be on obedience. Um, the scripture is coming from James chapter 1, verses 19 to 25. If you will turn there. Um, just to take a moment, um, as y'all know, Monday is Memorial Day. Um, I, I would just like to honor and, um, remember everyone that has, um, fallen in war. Um, just, if we will, just take a moment of silence for them. Thank you. 
So, as y'all know, we are all under the authority of God. Um, and one day, every knee will bow at God's stone. As followers of God, one way we show our submission to him is by following and reading his word. It's not only by acknowledging his truthfulness, but also by walking in obedience to him um, and the truth that it teaches. Today we're going to focus on how our obedience to God demands not only our acknowledgement of the truth of his word, but also our obedience to the word and what it teaches us. Um, this lesson is going to be broken down in three parts. The first part is our obedience to God begins with act of hearing, which is verses 19 to 20. Number two is our obedience to God's word requires ongoing action, verses 22 to 24. And number three is our obedience to God's word results in promised blessings, verses 25. So let's look at 19 through 20. Where, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man works not with the righteousness of God. James follows with the persistent perspective of commands calling for continuous action. Commands we're supposed to do every day, ongoing. We can't just wake up one day and decide, hey, I think I'm going to follow what God says or hey, I think I'm going to watch what I say today. We have to do that every day. On, that's what ongoing actions are. Um, God is telling us these actions to avoid talking too much and avoid re reacting harshly. Now, me personally, I like to talk. Y'all probably know that. <laughs> but I have to watch what I say. But I also get where I like to talk so much from my mom. <laughs> Love you, Mom. <laughs> so we need to avoid talking too much. And why we need to do that is because, let's say we're in an argument with somebody, okay? They're calling you this, and you don't like it too much. So, well, you go back at them, calling them names or whatever. What That ends up leading into a fight, whether it's fighting with words or physical fighting. Um, so that's when he's saying we need a, to avoid reacting harshly and to be slow to speak. Um, we have to learn to put away our <clears throat> filthiness and our wickedness because it affects our relationship with God. Um, we have to have a, not a sinful life because none of us are perfect, but we have to work towards him. We have to read his word. We have to pray. We have to minister to other people. Um, it, it makes sure that we have an, an active learning or actively leaving our sinful life um, if we're walking closer to him um, because our sinful life prevents us from hearing and ministering God's word. James isn't implying, like I said, that his readers can work towards sinless perfection, causing them which would cause them to hear God's word in a manner that is completely unhindered by their sinful nature. However, James is making it clear that we need to be better prepared to hear so we know what to say and what we know what to do when we're in a situation. Um, do you regularly position yourself to hear God's word actively? actively and clearly and do you allow it to speak to your heart rather than simply taking it in and then walking out and doing nothing um, we need to start when we hear something we need to start putting it in our perspective we need to go out and we need to minister we need to pray we need to meditate about it upon it number two our obedience to God's word requires ongoing action. Verses 22 to 24. 
But be ye doers of the word and not hearers, only, deceive, only deceiving your own selves. For if any, any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass before he holds himself and goes his way and immediately forgets the man he was. Most people think active hearing is enough, but that's not true. James gives another ongoing commandment at the beginning of verse 22. Be, but be ye doers of the word. A person can listen to the best preachers, the best sermon out there. But if they hear that sermon and then go off and do nothing that that sermon said, are they really following God's word? Are they really obeying him? Um... But dishonoring God, is, we're dishonoring him by not hearing the truth that he is telling us. Anyone can get in the congregation up here and sing, oh, how I love Jesus. But if we're not honoring him and we're not obeying him, what's, that's, it's not, we can't, we can't do that. You have to, you have to love, truly love the Lord. Um, with all your heart and all your soul. Amen. It's, it's kind of like this. Okay? One day, a country preacher decides he's going to skip church. So, he heads up to the hills to go bear hunting. Well, as he rounds a corner of a, of a peculiar touristy trail, he and the bear collide, sending him and his rifle tumbling down the mountainside. Before he knew it, his rifle went one way and he went the other, landing on a rock and breaking both his legs. Now get this, this that's the good news. <laughs> the bad news was the ferocious bear was charging at him from a distance and he couldn't move. Oh Lord, the preacher prayed, I'm sorry for skipping church service today to come out here and hunt. Please forgive me and grant me one wish. Please make a Christian out of this bear. <laughs> The very intense bear skidded to a halt, fell to his knees, collapsed his paws, and began to pray out loud. Lord, thank you for this food I'm about to receive. <laughs> See, now we know not to skip church. <laughs> How we live into obedience is God has given us his word as a mirror. That shows us an accurate reflection of who we are. Some people go up to this mirror and they look at themselves and they see a sinner. They do nothing about it though. They turn the other cheek and they walk off, forgetting everything they've done. Then, Christians, people who love the Lord and see, they look at this mirror and they see what they have done is wrong. They see that their life is sinful and that they've sinned. And they ask the Lord for forgiveness. That's what we should all be doing. Um, our response to seeing that reflection should be grateful for God's grace. Amen. We should acknowledge that he saved, he, he died on the cross for our sins. Ours. He was perfect. He was sinless, but he loved us so much that he died on the cross for us. Jesus said, those who truly have a relationship with me and who truly love me would obey me and my commandments. Have you ever heard the equation stated belief, actually practice, actually believe? If you have, what is your current obedience to God's word? Say about the constant the actual degree to which you believe in it. Does the way your life demonstrate constant active submission to God and His Word through a lifestyle of ongoing obedience, or does it not? Number three, our obedience to God's Word results in promised blessings. Verses 25, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues there, there, he is being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. 
James says his hearers should look into the law of God. The law of God does not bring oppression, but true freedom, true liberty. True freedom to walk outside your house and pray. True freedom to go to a church service like this. Um, some countries, they don't even have enough. They don't have the rights that we have. We are blessed as people. Um, many people in other countries, um, they can't even walk outside and say they love the Lord or they'll get thrown in jail or worse. Freedom to God's law is not freedom to do whatever we want, but freedom to do what is right in the Lord's eyes. There is no greater freedom than a man living in obedience to God's plan. And to live according to the purpose that which we were created. So what is the promised blessing that comes as a, as a result of obedience? Does our obedience to God's word promise material blessings or does it promise prosperity? It promises none of that. What it promises is the greatest blessing of obedience is knowing that your obedience has resulted in the honor and joy of God. It's kind of like that feeling when you're a little kid and you do something nice for your parents or you clean the house or you do the dishes and they, they're they proud of you. Um, That's what God is. Whenever we do his commandments, whenever we obey him, he's proud of us. The, our obedience is, honor, is honoring God. Do you delight... Do you find delight in the blessing in knowing that God is honored by what you do? Because I know I do. For the conclusion, um, if y'all, if anyone in here isn't saved, um, I invite you to come down to this altar today and give your life to God. Um, I would, it, and just to try to start trying to obey his word to do his word to do his commandments because we all need to practice that doing that better because I know I ain't perfect and I know no one in this room is perfect so let's all of us work on being better be, be better obeying God's word and what he does thank you Well, every head bowed, every eye closed. We, we do acknowledge that we serve a mighty God who is more than able to save. Amen. If you have a desire to come to this altar, lift up the name of the Lord. Ask Him for salvation. I invite you to walk down the aisle. If you have a burden or a trial that you're facing, there's no better place than an old-fashioned order to come and pray about it. If you know someone who stands in the need of prayer, why don't you be their intercessor today and go to God in prayer for them and asking God to help in their situation, whatever it may be. For those that's listening at home and in the fellowship hall, we invite you to do the same. Just pray for yourself or for someone else in need. For whatever reason, Let's go to the Lord at this time. Let's, let's everyone stand. Let's sing this song. And if God presses upon your heart to move out, please come.
such a wonderful job today making all the announcements, leading us in our work. Thank you. Thank you. And all of these that participated in this gift, thank you, Sydney, and all of those that were part of that. Such a wonderful lesson in this gift. Miss Brenda, I know you're tired. You already got your exercise in. <laughs> in <the back. laughs> and how about Kevin? <laughs> what a challenge God has given us through him. And I pray that you're taking the heart. Go back home and read over that scripture again. Let God speak to your heart. Such a great job. I want you, I want you to go to the door and let everybody tell you how much they appreciate you and all the message that you brought today. And then, uh, Kaylee, where is she at? Kaylee, come on out here with me, Kaylee. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, we want to present you with this baptismal certificate. And uh, we thank you and love you and God bless you. Can you please come by and give her a handshake, give her a hug, uh, give her a high five, just wave at her. <laughs> and uh, as you leave today, so you stay right here, and everybody come by. Okay? And also, I got a card I want to read in closing. It's from Miss Linda Anderson. It says, Dear church members, the family of Sally Carmichael sincerely thank you for your prayers, cards, flowers, and food. Please continue to keep us in your thoughts and prayers during this difficult time, and we certainly will. Anybody got any comments or testimonies you'd like to share with us before we close out? They did good, didn't they? they did. Can't wait till the next year, son. Can you? <laughs> all right, all hearts and minds clear? Okay, then, Sydney, would you mind closing us in prayer? Oh, okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be here in church with and uh, honor and serve you today. Thank you for allowing uh, the youth to have a space to express themselves and to share the gospel uh, with those who may not know you or those who just need a little touch up. Thank you for all the support you give us. Uh, for those prayer requests, we hope that everything goes well, that people continue to pray for those who are in need. We pray for everyone to have a lovely week and to come back and join us next Sunday. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.